Welcome to Vietnam. We are very fortunate to visit some sensational locations with the Legends Tour and both very, very excited to be in Vietnam this week. Rachel, what do you think of the place so far? It's stunning kit. Look around us. We've got the sea, we've got the mountains, spectacular golf course, amazing people. We've even been to a temple. I'm having a great time. You've been a busy, busy lady because you've been out on the course as well, chatting to the players. What can we expect from this week in terms of the challenge? So you can't tell too much at the moment we're in shelter, but there's going to be a lot of wind, which the players are going to have to navigate. The course is in fantastic condition. Pass Ballam grass, tricky around the greens. A lot of undulations, they're going to need their walking boots, but an A game is definitely needed. Absolutely. All set for a brilliant week. We are having a great time, and so are the players. The general consensus between all the players, I think, is very positive. You can see how much work they put into this place. It's a treat to be here. It's a beautiful place, but the beauty of the place is in its people. They seem to have a smile on their face every single time. They've opened their hearts and they've made it comfortable for all of us. Adilson de Silva is enjoying a fabulous season on the Legends Tour. Three wins, a runner-up finish, three more top tens as well. Now, normally, that would be enough to be coasting it in the MCB road to Mauritius, but this year, he's run into the buzzsaw that is Peter Baker. Three wins of his own, a host of other big finishes as well. That all means he sits top of the order of merit, and de Silva, needs a minimum of a top five finish and to finish ahead of Peter Baker to extend that race to Mauritius next week. Earlier this week, I caught up with Adilson de Silva to reflect on his wonderful year so far. How happy are you with how it's all gone? Yeah, no, it's been an amazing year for me. Um, <clears throat> been very fortunate this year and uh, also working really hard. I mean, I'm just trying to stay calm and stay you know, at the present, and it's, you know, I've been putting a lot of work on my mental side as well, and uh, definitely it's been paying off. Yeah, you'd think with three wins and all your other good results as well, you'd be flying high at the top of the MCB road to Mauritius, but a certain Peter Baker, I can see you chuckling, has uh, yeah. got himself ahead of you. Have you got his picture on a dartboard at home and stuff, or are yeah. you cursing him? No, nah, look, uh, you know, I've got to take my hat off for Peter. He's an amazing player, always been a good player, and. Uh, yeah, he's just been playing so good, man. When I think I'm going to get some points back from him, it just doesn't happen. <laughs> so, but, but the good thing is it makes me work harder. I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's never going to be easy. No one said it's ever going to be easy. So I think well, him being playing well makes me, you know, trying to play better and, and work hard on it, which is, I think you need that. And it's, you need tough competition. And then, yeah, in the end, you know, it's, it's going to be all good. Have you felt the on-course rivalry kind of growing with him through the season? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, as I said, he's he got a lot of experience and, and you can see he looks cool outside there. You finished second on the MCB Road to Mauritius last year. That also earned you the Barry Lane Rookie of the Year Award, which I know you were hugely proud of and, and it was a great rookie season. But how much do you just want to go that one step better and finish as the number one <laughs> this year? Yeah, I know, it would be amazing. Um, <clears throat> you know, being, being playing this tour now for the next last two years it's it's been insane i really like it and also also the golf courses also suit me which makes such a big difference but you know we'll, we'll give another two more events to go so you never know well you've had a wonderful season whatever happens these next two weeks so well played and good luck this week thank in you Vietnam. thanks very much thank, thank you, you. scott hend became a legends tour winner at the winston golf senior open in september He's a specialist in this part of the world with 10 professional wins in Asia across the DP World and Asian tours. Rachel's been out on the course with him. Scott Hen, thank you so much for joining us. Talk to us about why your game suits golf in Asia. Well, it's because the conditions and the, the grass types and the way the greens are and stuff is very similar to where, obviously growing up in Australia, so for me to come and play in Asia, it's not really much of a change. Whereas if when I go to, to Europe, uh, Poana Greens, which I detest, and a few other grasses I struggle with. So 
just coming here feels like I'm nearly at home. It's very similar to Florida as well, a lot of the grass types. And we're going to talk specifically about this course and the challenges you face this week. What sort of game, what sort of shots are required? Well, just what's happening now, it's quite windy. It's hard to judge the wind because we have the mountains around the golf course, so sometimes it swirls. Um, not knowing the golf course very well, it's my first time here. I'm just seeing it, obviously, for the first time today. It's, uh, it's a challenge to try and pick the clubs and the lines off the tee, so I'll be learning it as, as the week goes on. And I'm guessing everybody else is in the same boat, so whoever can handle the wind and adjust your ball flight is, is going to be, obviously, right up there. You won't tell everyone where you just took your tee shot here on... <laughs> Well, you've got to donate some to the water gods occasionally. <laughs> so my caddy's up there in the Singapore Daisy. I don't think he's going to find that one. He's still looking. And you spoke about the grass. It's past Ballum. Yep. A little bit sticky. Do you yep. change your technique at all? Uh, sometimes you just have to look how they're mowing the grass and whether how sandy it is underneath for whether the, the leaf is going to affect it when you putt. So generally the greens run a little bit slower, so you can be a little bit more confident in your lines. So take a little bit of break off and hit a little bit firmer could be two from two this week. Good luck. Yeah, well, thanks. We'll see what happens. Thanks, Scott. Later in the show, Rachel's getting some strategy tips from Jeeve Milkersing. But right now, it's time to jump into the action and find out how our main protagonist got on in the first couple of rounds with your commentary team, Warren Humphreys, and first of all, Michael McMullen. Thanks, Kit. Vietnam is one of the most populous nations on Earth, with 100 million people rightly famed for their friendly welcome. This country's been breaking all sorts of new ground in the sporting world of late. This event is the latest innovation. And we start at number one. Peter Baker in that position on the MCB road to Mauritius. Here, paring 18 in an opening 69. Despite this excellent tee shot at the third, it was a slow start for Michael Campbell, but it was a fast finish as he closed out the round in some style with an eagle and a birdie for 69 and a two under par total. Scott End only joined the over 50s this year, but he's already making a solid impact at this level. The Australian bringing his vast experience to bear and setting up this birdie chance at the 18th. Yes, after birdies at 5, 6, 12, 13 and 17, Scott nonchalantly hold out for his sixth birdie of the day, home in 31 and an opening 66. Another relatively new addition to the Legends Tour ranks is Adilson da Silva. The Brazilian is loving life on this circuit and playing alongside Hend, he would also begin with a 66. Yes. So that pair shared the lead as we headed into day two, Warren. Yes, and two bogeys and two double bogeys on the car for Peter Baker in round two, but he showed great fighting spirit to eagle the 17th and finish with a 75. But he's nine shots off the pace after two rounds. Ricardo Gonzalez went double bogey eagle at one stage of his opening 69. A less turbulent second day, including this tap in par at the short eighth, yielded a 71 for two under. Nobody bubbles with more enthusiasm than Jochen Hagman, and after an opening 71, he followed that with a four under par 67. The only player to be bogey free on day two. No wonder he's happy about that. After starting his round on the 10th, De Silva's birdie here on 18 was the third of four that he made in the first 10 holes. Just dropping in the side door. A wretched seven at the long sixth set him back, but this shot on nine ensured De Silva would complete a run of three straight pars after that to finish a 69, which sends him into the last day as the man to chase. You know, tomorrow uh, we're just going to try to enjoy it and then just let, let it happen and just, you know, I'll be happy in the end of the day if I gave myself a chance. You know, whatever happens, you know, it's... Michael's a great champion, as I said in the, in the past, and then if I play my best uh, and I'm happy, I give myself a chance, I'll be happy. It doesn't matter the results. And with all that, De Silva leads by two shots over Campbell with 18 holes to run. Hegman sitting a stroke further back alongside a Legends Tour rookie, Andrew Marshall. Adilson De Silva looking for his fourth win of the year then, heading into the final day in Vietnam.
Welcome, Welcome back, back to, to Vietnam. Vietnam. It's very windy, as it has been all week here in Vietnam. And heavy rain last night has really softened the golf course. But nothing is dampening my excitement because we have got an epic round ahead of us. And what a final three ball. The leader, Adilson de Silva, going for his fourth win of the season. Michael Campbell, the 2005 US Open champion, he's starting just two shots back and making up this final group. The always entertaining Joachim Hegman, a former Ryder Cup player. This is going to be a cracker. Yes, and so many potential good stories could develop today, Warren, as we review the early play. Well, when Greg Hutchins opened up on day one with the 67, he birdied the second, and after this approach to the same hole, he'd birdie it again. Let's hope it's a good omen for the Scot. Joachim Hegman hadn't dropped any shots in his second round 67, but a penalty drop and this missed put for bogey meant two slipped away on the opening hole for one of half a dozen Ryder Cup players in the field. It's a good opening par four at the first of 436 yards and under pressure straight away is our leader De Silva. But after that excellent bunker shot, he holed that tricky five footer for his par to keep his lead. And with De Silva's par being matched by Michael Campbell, the gap between them remains at two. Andrew Marshall now has a share of second place though, having backed up his birdie start with par at the second hole, which is where Campbell has now arrived. Uh, the second hole, 371 yards, not long hole, but there is water down the right-hand side. Campbell out with a fairway metal for accuracy. And just getting a little bit of run on these damp fairways. 239 total, that's a pretty good tee shot. More importantly, it's on the fairway. De Silva, though, out with the driver, aiming down the left-hand side. Away from the water, and that was very gently struck. That's a soft driver, just a little cut shot. I wonder he's some way behind that of Campbell. Solid enough start for Gonzalez, couple of pars, but going into the day five behind, needs to make something happen quite early on. Lovely controlled swing there, nice finish too for Gonzalez, known for his power, of course, but that was Good for accuracy. Now back to the second and Hegman. You can see the different approaches that people have on these holes. Out with the iron, that's a drawn shot. Well away from the water. Wouldn't expect this to carry too far. Uh, well, just under the 200 yard mark. That's certainly all right for Hegman. Uh, Scott End has had a shocking start. Three bogeys in the first four holes, but he can get two of those three strokes back in one go here. Safe two puts. Set to be the outcome, though. Yeah, may have been expecting that to trickle on down the slope there, but he didn't get the run. Now back to the second, the approach into the green for Hegman. Always good fun watching Heggy play. He's so exuberant. Oh, drifting a little bit towards the water, away from that flag, but it's OK. He's on the dance floor. Now, I was saying Gonzalez needs to make something happen early on if he's to have a chance of winning this. And he's given himself the opportunity here at the short third. And with that, he gets it to three under. First move is a positive one. Uh, De Silva with his approach to the second. Another low flighted shot coming into the green. Obviously, his game plan is to keep it down with this fair breeze blowing across the course. Excellent shot. Hend came up just a bit short with his eagle attempt. But there was never any doubt about the birdie, and it was needed after that start. So off and running, back to level par. We return to the former US Open champion, Michael Campbell. 
Certainly have his eyes set on the flag here, very much a birdie opportunity. Good through the ball there, Campbell, nice and brisk, but he's come up a little shy, half a club short. Now, Peter Baker is unlikely to win this tournament, but for him, it's all about finishing as close to De Silva as possible to protect his advantage in the MCB road to Mauritius. And it's going well, out in 33, and there he starts his homeward journey with a par. Now, another member of the 93 Ryder Cup team alongside Baker, it's Joachim Hegman. Outside chance here for a birdie for Hegman. Slow putt. And with that overnight rain that they've had, it's bound to be a little bit tricky for the players to get a feel for the greens. Will have changed from what they were like over the first two rounds. So an early chance for Campbell to close to within one of the lead. Still remarkably chasing his first win on the Legends Tour. Oh, if only, if only. They're the really sore ones. You see it online all the way to the hole. You just haven't hit it. Hurts. Yeah, and having missed that chance to get back within one, he could, in a moment, find himself trailing by three because De Silva has this very makeable putt to get to eight under. Mm, that was very hesitant, wasn't it? Wasn't like his stroke over the first couple of rounds, so a little bit nervy there for the leader. Always hard. Protecting a lead, and you're out in front, final round. Players chasing you, Hegman now for his par. That's boldly struck, that's the way to knock him in. So pars all round for the three front runners mean the situation is unchanged among them. That birdie by Gonzalez, though, brings the rest of the field a touch closer to that leading trio. At the par five fifth, Michael Campbell had this 20-foot putt to save his par. And like the second, he was not able to reach the hole. So that'll feel like a double bogey as he drops back to four under par. Golf pros just hate bogeys at par fives. They hurt. Hegman's prospects were crumbling. His second double bogey in the first six holes, leaving him four over for the round. So great credit to the Swede for clawing one back straight away here at the seventh. And a spring back in the step of Scott Hend as he makes this four birdies in a row to be three under again through eight. All pars for leader De Silva until his first move came in the form of birdie on six, but he gave that back by missing this two holes later. The Brazilian still patiently trying to carve out some final round momentum. Yes, and a slightly awkward putt for him here at the ninth, up a little ridge at the edge of the green. Tricky to gauge the pace of it. But he's judged it perfectly to be out in a level par, 36. And so De Silva is back where he spent much of the day so far with a two-shot lead. Campbell responded to that bogey by birdieing the next, otherwise all pars on the front nine for the Kiwi, who's now joined at five under by Gonzalez, as all the focus turns to the back nine, Warren. And it starts with a beautiful par three tenth. 178 yards, pinned today back right, and wind slightly down and off the left. So just a medium iron, or medium short iron here for Hegman. And he's just let that drift away a little bit on the breeze. He's annoyed with that. Came out of the shot early. A lot of good, relatively new players on the Legends Tour at the moment, including Andrew Marshall, only turned 50 in late August, but produced some good play already on this circuit. And again this week. Let's see what Campbell can do here on the 10th on the par threes. Over the first couple of rounds, he was two under par 
for the short holes. Pretty good going. See his strong right hand there, trying to hold it up into that little bit of breeze that's off the left and behind him. Back to the smooth swinger of De Silva. Plays very much within himself, this man. Nice tempo. Actually trying to throw that one in the air a little bit. Get it to carry on down the breeze, and he's just dragged it a tiny bit. Yeah, De Silva level par for the day. Still out in front, but his lead is down to a single stroke now over Ricardo Gonzalez, who's just gone to four under for the day with his birdie at the 11th. Here he is on 12. Chance of another one, Warren. Yes, good shot. Good pro shot there, missing it on the left. As we go back to Hegman, using the putter from just off the edge of the green, so this will be a slow putt. That's pretty good for weight. Yeah, out in 39, he needs a spectacular back nine to have any chance at all. Mardan Mamat now from Singapore. Yes, one in Singapore back in the day, which proved to be a big hit for him. Singapore in winning in his own country, always a big deal. Yeah, that was 2006. It was his only win on the European Tour. Beat Nick Doherty by a stroke. Oh, and he left the flag in there. It's trying to be a little bit more positive with the putt, and it's worked out for De Silva. So that's an excellent two to start the back nine. And he goes a couple clear again. Do his confidence no end of good. But it means for the guys chasing, they've got to start holding putts. Campbell, can he get it to the hole? Been short all day. That's woeful. That's not like him at all. Gonzalez with all the momentum at the moment, as we said. He set up a chance for his fifth birdie of the round. Well, we can't see it, but we can tell from his reaction. Taps in, though. Stays six under. Very much in the mix. So another look at the popular New Zealander. We talked about that US Open win 18 years ago. Won the world match play the same year. Hasn't won a pro event of any description since. Incredible. It's remarkable because, well, back then in 2005, he was the man on tour. Beat Paul McGinley in that world match play title at Wentworth. Now, Hegman just cleans up, so he makes his par, moves on. He won't give up. He's a fighter. Andrew Marshall never managed to win on the regular tour, was a runner-up on two occasions. But he'll have every chance of winning today if this goes in. And he does indeed move into a share of second place. Just a couple back of De Silva now. So a positive start to the homeward journey for De Silva. Once again, he's a couple in front. But fellow South American Gonzalez is the man with the greatest momentum behind him. And now, alongside Marshall, leading the chase. No wonder all creatures great and small want a glimpse of this final round. It's the final round of the Vin Pearl DIC Legends Vietnam, a first time staging on the Legends Tour. And as we head for the closing stretch, Adilson De Silva leads as he did when the day began. Birdie at 11 has extended that lead to three over a group which now includes Michael Campbell after he also picked up a shot on the same hole. Michael, it really is very tricky to see how tough it is out here on TV. Tell us how the conditions are. Yeah, like um, I think the first couple of days, especially yesterday, it was pretty similar, but 20, 30 knot guts, gusts out there, and it's very hard to read the greens with the grain, but um, it's a true test of golf. I think it's, um, if I got a chance to have a few more birdies, I might, I might catch uh, Eddie, but uh, he's playing well. He's not going to make any mistakes. It's about me making birdies now. But the 12th hole gives them a good chance to 
make a birdie. It's only 318 yards as you play from an elevated tee down to the fairway. Water away on the right, but again, you can't hit it too far, otherwise trees come into play down the left side. And it just leaves a little flick to the green. So again, premium on being on the fairway. De Silva out with the fairway metal. And that was very softly struck. Just a very quiet tee shot there, not carrying too far. Now Higman out with the iron again. We know he likes to draw the ball. Aim that down the centre of the fairway, just let it move a little right to left. He seems happy with that. Carry there to 10 to 12 distance. That's just spot on for his long iron. Credit to Scott Hen for turning it round the way he has. Dropped three shots in the first four holes, but he's had five birdies since then. This for another on 13. Certainly can't be accused of not giving it a chance. Looks like a player who still feels he could win this. Campbell, let's see how aggressive he will be on this hole. Very strong player. It's a little stinger shot down the centre of the fairway. Furthest of the three at 225. Good tee shot there from Campbell. Uh, Singapore's standard bearer in the game, Mardan Mamat. If he pops this in and has a big finish, he could still have a chance. Never threatened, though, did it? Yes, I think you could put that down to a misread from that distance. Not what he was looking for. Let's hope Hegman can nestle this one up close. 30 years ago this year, he had his first win on the European Tour. He was only 23 when he became Spanish Open champion. How the years fly by. De Silva now. Always nice watching this rhythm. Just lets the club drop into the ball. Ball first, then turf. Good control. Again, has the weight of the shot. Absolutely perfect. One of my favourite moments in golf, Warren, was when Campbell played that unbelievable shot out of the road hole bunker the year he almost won the Open. And the way he celebrated, the joy of youth, fantastic stuff. Yeah, it was always good to watch. I have that view of him when he was playing with Tiger in the final round of the US Open, matching the great man shot for shot. Absolute beauty to watch. Feels like this has to go in if Marshall is to stay right in the hunt. Oh, that's frustrating. So he'll be back to five under. I think we've seen a lot of that today. I think players just undercooking the pace of putts. And I think that overnight rain is just making things a little bit more tricky for them. Not quite got up to speed yet on the greens. Loss of momentum after birdieing both of the previous two holes. Can Campbell birdie 12? He's got to start getting aggressive. He's got to start giving these putts a little bit more impetus. And oh, that's again way short of pace, and he's misread it as well. Now, this man made such a fast start. It was a case of speedy Gonzalez. Now at 13, it's about avoiding his first drop shot of the day. And he does stay at six under par. Higman for his birdie attempt then at 12. Down a little bit of grain, hence he was a little bit more circumspect there than he wanted to be. <laughs> Seems to be a common theme today, the shaking of the head on the greens. So we talked about De Silva having to be patient as he looked to establish a bit of momentum in this final round. Quite front nine for him. But it looks as though that momentum may finally have arrived. Birdie 10, birdied 11. This for three in a row and a four-shot lead. Never looked in doubt, did it? Absolutely perfect pace. And, well, he must start believing now that this is going to be his day. Campbell not a happy time on the greens, but taps in for his par.
All of a sudden then, De Silva is in firm control. Now just off that page is four-time DP World Tour winner Jeev Milka Singh, who's currently inside the top 10. Earlier, we spoke about the importance of course management around Vin Pearl Golf Natran, and Rachel has got the thoughts of the Indian star about how he approaches that. Jeev, thank you so much for joining us. Do you have a consistent routine every shot? Because I think a lot of amateurs probably might do things on one hole and not on another. So do you have that routine every, every shot? Every shot. I think the most important thing to play good, consistent golf is to have a routine. And my routine is basically what I do is I line up my shot I just pick up my target in front of the ball and I like to keep my left side a little bit stronger, especially in the wind because I want to compress the ball. So I just basically look at that and I try to swing over it and keep going left. What I mean by left is that I'm releasing the club, I'm not holding on to it. If I hold on to it, I'm going to hit it right. So I release the club so that the body catches up and the club head comes square to the ball. I see you've actually lined up the Titleist logo on your golf ball. Is that to help with your direction? And that's that? right, that's right. It's very important. I've basically lined up that Titleist logo to where the ball needs to start. And that helps me line up too. If, if, even if I'm not in sync, okay, at least I've got that. That's another reminder for me that I'm lining it up to the target where the ball needs to start and then just swing. And that's my routine. And only one or two swing thoughts there, nothing? Uh, my swing, uh, basically I want to keep it simple. This game is tough enough. So my swing thoughts are very simple. It's only two thoughts I have. One is to keep the left side firm, a lot of weight on the left. And the second thing is going left. So turning, basically turning. Consistent routine and a couple of swing thoughts. Jobs That's are good. Adilson De Silva's thoughts are about winning yet another title. And a four shot lead puts him in great position to do just that. The finish is next. The penultimate event of the 2023 season has taken the Legends Tour to Vietnam for the first time, and the pack are chasing Adilson De Silva. Now, it took a long time to come, but Ricardo Gonzalez finally dropped his first shot of the day at 14. There was danger of another bogey on the next hole, but he was safely up and down for par. Scott Hend earlier had four birdies in a row from the fifth. He birdied the 15th, and with that putt, he birdies the 16th. Can he make a couple more? He's looking cool. Well, he then earned himself a chance to eagle 17 and get within one of the leads. It will be three straight birdies, but perhaps he needed the eagle to keep the pressure on the silver and maintain real hope of a second win this season. Adilson De Silva, he dropped a shot at the par 330. This to get it back to 10 under. So close, but just a wee bit hesitant. He had another birdie prospect one hole later, but from off the green, it was always an outside chance. By having to settle for another par, De Silva kept hope alive for those in closest pursuit. Still, though, two pars to finish should get the job done. With two holes left, including a par five, maybe Campbell has the best chance of stopping De Silva. And another good week for MCB road to Mauritius leader Peter Baker as he signs off with a 67. All eyes on the final group now, though, as they come to the last hole but one. Hole 17, par 5, 544 yards. Now we've got an elevated tee. It plays 36 down, and if the players find this point, it's a 270 drive. Now, if you follow me, it's certainly a risk and reward hole. We've got water and we've got thick rough, and it's around the 220 mark to hit this green in two. Will the players go for it? It's a fantastic penultimate hole. Of course he's going to go for it. Michael Campbell, terrific tee shot out with the fairway metal. Got to be brave here, commit yourself to the shot. Certainly got through it well. Is it online? Oh, it is online, but it's a touch short. Look at the shot, though, from Hegman. He's in with an eagle opportunity. He must have buttoned his as well. Campbell did eagle that hole in round one. And not 
beyond the realms of possibility he could do again from there. Now, Scott Hend, since that awful start, has had eight birdies in the last 13 holes. Well, he won't have another one there, but it's going to be a par to finish and a fine closing 66. Not surprising, De Silva laid up on the par five. His position, it's the sensible thing to do. Maybe sticking to his routine, his course plan. Didn't really go at the flag, but in his position, I suppose he doesn't need to. Former PGA champion at Wentworth some years ago, Simon Can. This for birdie at the last. 70 and 71 in the two previous rounds. 72 to finish. Yeah, it's good to see uh, Simon out there playing. Of course, suffered in the latter years on the DP World Tour with back problems, but seems to be moving well out there at the moment. And the last gasp here for Scotty Hend. Terrific final round. He's played so much good golf this week. Started and finished with a 66. Just a pity about the 74 sandwiched in between. But what a recovery after the way his final day initially unfolded. Back to Campbell looking for his second eagle on 17 this week. A tricky little shot too, just coming out of this fluffy grass. Can he get the right contact? No, nope. just a little bit of grass trapped between the club face and the ball comes out soft. Hard to swallow that after such a good second shot. Now, Adilson De Silva could get it to 10 under here, and it'll be hard to see him losing from that position. But he wouldn't be dissatisfied with a two put, I wouldn't think. Allowing for a fair bit of break from left to right down the slope. And that could be the key moment. And the body language suggests he knows how important that was. De Silva to double figures again. How sweet was that? Right out of the middle of the pass, a perfect pace. No wonder he's looking pretty chirpy about that one. Yeah, look to the heavens, thank you very much. Ricardo Gonzalez had his only win so far on the Legends Tour just over a year ago. Got himself into the picture today. Isn't going to happen, but it will be a good finish. That's a lovely, lazy delivery of the club into the ball. Gonzalez, easy power that he has. Hegman is another player who's had a good response to a bad start. Two double bogeys in the first six, but this is for Eagle on 17 to get back to just one over for the day. Well done, Heggy. Always uh, a try right at the end. Snaked its way in, but it found the bottom of the cup. That's the important thing. So we saw Hend finish with 66. Gonzalez can match that. A fair bit of swing on that. A little bit of grain, a little bit of wind affecting the ball. It's certainly been tricky out there for the players. Never easy when you're playing in blustery conditions. Michael Campbell's best result this season, third at the Stayshore PGA Seniors in Scotland in August, albeit 10 behind the winner, Peter Baker. Well, that was certainly far from his best put of the season. Yeah, maybe just an alignment problem. He seemed to be aiming that one a long way right, and it went right. Maybe a little bit of work on the putting green required for Michael. Mardan Mamat was only two off the lead after his opening 68, but it's gradually deteriorated for him since then. It's going to be a final round 73, but he will finish in red figures for the week. And if he can be smiling on the 18th green as he is, Warren, it's not been too bad a tournament. No, certainly not, but it's certainly a demanding course, you have to say. Just under 6,800 yards, par 71, blustery conditions really have to play very well and he has played superbly all three days gonzalez then to wrap it up got off to a really fast start put himself in contention wasn't quite able to keep up and from argentina has another good showing though 67 to finish a little tap in at the last two for marshall 
Another good week's work. Anytime you finish under par on this particular layout, you've done extremely well. De Silva's been such a good front runner this season when he's got into a, a strong position. He's been very good at closing it out. He won by six last year at Formby. Loves being at the head of proceedings, and it looks as though it's going to be his day, particularly after that shot. Three clear walking up 18. Well, all he has to do, do all he has to do, one more good swing, get it on the middle of the green. He really will be able to relax then. And never doubted that he would find the centre of the putting surface. Excellent stuff from De Silva. Hegman has been a runner-up on the Legends Tour this year. A couple behind Bradley Dredge at Hanbury Manor in August. Would have come into today with thoughts of going one better, but it all fell away early on. He's finishing nicely, though. Eagle on 17, and he'll have that for a closing birdie. Well, just a little bit below the feet for Campbell. It will promote the ball sliding away to the right, which is why most people have finished right of this flag today. But let's hope Michael can hold that putt at least and finish with a flourish. The walk to inevitable victory is so sweet. Michael Campbell's made it in some very big tournaments in his career. Not yet on the Legends Tour. Which is amazing when you think the caliber of the player, but it shows you how strong the fields are out on the Legends Tour. Hegman now to try and coax this one in. A little bit weary for pace, that one from Joachim. Not what he intended, leaving himself a little test at the last. And really now, for this smiling Brazilian, it's just all about the margin of victory and how big it is. Yeah, so I think Caddy showing the break there for De Silva, but he can enjoy this putt now on the last with such a margin. Always oh, nice when you can come to the last hole, you know you've got quite a few for it. You can really enjoy the moment and he should enjoy the moment. He's played so well. Campbell now, come on. Has to make one of these. No, he can't. It's going to be a round of 70, but it's a round of what might have been for Campbell. For the same money, he could easily have shot 65 or 66 today with his play to the green. Yeah, he'll be 55 early in the new year, and he will have one more chance next week to get his breakthrough win on this circuit before then. to that stage now of the tournament where it's just a little bit of tidying up to do. Hegman will do his first. This to be home in 33. That's a very good recovery, having got out in 39. Yeah, to be only one over for his round, having been four over through the first six, a decent effort. Well, this will quite definitely be the last shot of the tournament, and for the fourth time this year, Adilson De Silva is a Legends Tour winner. At the Vinpearl DIC Legends Vietnam, he is the inaugural champion. Congratulations from all around him for the 51-year-old who controlled this final round from start to finish. A very impressive wire-to-wire -wire winner. It's a remarkable fifth win in all for the Brazilian since he joined this tour at the start of last year. And just like his last win in France in September, he's triumphant by three. Man, it's such a, a amazing week, wonderful week. You know, and then to, to win here with, you know, so many nice people and <clears throat> cheering for you and, you know, for all they've done for us this week, it's just, it is extra special. So it's now a quality quartet of 2023 victories for De Silva in Austria, Switzerland, France, and now here in Vietnam. And it all means he will travel to the final event of the season without much ground to make up on Peter Baker in the quest to be this year's MCB Road to Mauritius number one. Gonzalez soars to fourth.
We've had a blast on our first ever visit to Vietnam and what a winner we had. Adilson de Silva claiming his fourth title of the season and closing the gap to Peter Baker at the top of the MCB road to Mauritius. It will all be decided next week at the MCB Tour Championship Mauritius and we'll see you there.